divine truth frequently ask questions. Jesus, Mary and others provide answers to questions that are frequently asked by members of the media and public. The subject of this session is spirits. This is session two. Is a person or a spirit who influences another person or overcloaks another accountable for their own actions from God's perspective? If they choose to harm another person in this, matter, in this manner, what is the effect upon the soul of the person doing the harm? Okay, well, if we draw the influence firstly down to positive and negative influence, so that it's possible to have either of two influences upon a person. If the influence is positive in the sense that it's in harmony with love and it also helps the person on earth become more in harmony with love, then there will always be a positive benefit to the soul of the spirit who's trying to assist the person on earth. And in fact, the way God's laws all work is there is always a consequence, mm -hmm. whether it's positive or negative, for either breaking, for breaking the law or living in harmony with the law. There's always a positive consequence or a negative consequence, depending on whether we either live in harmony with the law or out of harmony with the law. So, of course, there is always a consequence of a spirit taking an action towards any other person, whether that person be a spirit or another person on earth. Mm -hmm. If the, the influence is positive, obviously the consequence for the soul of the person in the spirit world is positive, even if the person on earth chooses to not take the positive influence. Mm -hmm. So even though there might not be a result for the person on earth, moving in a positive direction, the spirit's intention for something positive to occur has a positive benefit to the soul of the spirit. So this is a very beautiful reward that the spirit receives for actually attempting to do something in harmony with love. If the spirit is the opposite to that and their intention is to destroy or harm the life of the person on earth, then obviously the, the consequence will be very negative towards the soul of the person in the spirit world who is attempting such actions. And the consequence will be not only a degrade, degradation of their own condition, but it will also mean that they'll be drawn into living in a location that's worse than the location they could have lived in if they hadn't taken the action, mm -hmm. if they had not taken the action. So in other words, not as the consequence personal, from the point of view of their own condition, but it also influences the location in which they can live. Mm -hmm. Now, for many of the spirits, they don't notice this initially because they're bound around the earth and so they're not living where they would normally live and therefore, not, therefore they do not notice that the, where they are living in this, or potentially could live in the spirit world is now being reduced. The same applies, of course, to the spirit who is working in a positive direction. Every positive action he takes he will live in a better condition in the spirit world. Now, obviously, if he's initially earthbound and he takes a positive action and, it, and then he takes another and another, unwittingly, he's actually progressing in the spirit world. And once yeah. he finds the location in the spirit world, he'll find it was a much better place than what he would have arrived in if he hadn't taken these positive actions. Mm -hmm. So the beauty of what God has done is that God's created this system in which, whether we're conscious of it or not, our actions out of harmony or in harmony with love have a either negative or, consequent or positive consequence mm -hmm. depending on what we choose to do. And, and this is a very powerful way of giving us feedback. So God is constantly trying to give us feedback, constantly trying to say, look, all of my universe is based around laws that are harmonious with love. And if you learn that and if you live in harmony with that and use your will in harmony with that, there are just beautiful consequences or benefits, if you like, for doing that. But if you continue to live out of harmony with love, on this other direction, out of harmony with love, out of harmony with other people's free will, damaging other people, you will damage yourself and you'll live in a worse place mm. in the end. And the beauty of the spirit world to a degree, if the person is living in it, so a person who passes over in the spirit world isn't necessarily yet living in the spirit world because they may live on the earth for many years before they do live in the spirit world. But if they were living in the spirit world and allowed themselves to live in the spirit world and saw their environment degrade, 
then they would know the action I took was out of harmony with love. Mm. If they saw their environment improve, then they would know the action they just took was in harmony with love. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the sad thing about many of these earthbound spirits is that because they are still living around the earth and have not yet really entered the place where they are meant to live in the long run, they don't get the feedback system and unfortunately most of them continue to take negative actions and therefore where they end up in the spirit world is often worse a place than the place they would have ended up if they went there straight away. Yeah. And so I would recommend to any person that, <laughs> that passes to not remain around the earth as they feel drawn to do but rather go to the place in the spirit world where they actually are drawn, where their soul will draw them to live, that their soul has created for them to live. And then if they do come back to earth, they'll at least know what actions are positive and what actions are negative by the degradation or improvement of their living location. Of their surroundings. Of their yeah. surroundings. So um, the first part of the question was about is a person or a spirit who influences another accountable for their actions from God's perspective? And you've answered that very much so. Definitely. We're all accountable We're for all, all our accountable actions. for every action, whether yeah. in out of, or out of harmony with love. The law, God's laws, automatically operate. Pardon me, automatically operate. They're like the laws of gravity. We've got to think of them like the laws of gravity. That's how, That's how certain they are they and are. unwavering they are. Yeah. They, have, they do not bend yeah. unless there is a higher law that can circumvent the action mm -hmm. of the lower law, like mm -hmm. the law of aerodynamics can overcome the law of gravity. Yes. And it's very much the same in our spirit form as it is in our physical. And everything to do with love is like this. So, so we must understand that every time we take an action that is out of harmony with love, there is a law that we break that's like the law of gravity. There's an instant and mm -hmm. direct effect on our soul and the souls of others. Yeah. Right? And, and unfortunately, because, it, because the action is taken out, out of harmony with love, it's not just a physical action, but one that's taken with a motive out of harmony with love, the consequence is very painful mm -hmm. in the spirit world that a person eventually feels. And if we understand that, then we understand that God has made a completely accountable system where God is saying, I am giving you this beautiful gift of free will, but you are now accountable for everything you do. So God has given you the gift, but made you the accountable being that you become. Now, we are accountable whether we want to take accountability or not mm -hmm. from God's perspective. We are accountable. We, there is no manipulation of God or God's laws in this process. You can't bend the rules. It's not Wait. like he's a police officer who comes along and you say, look, mate, uh, can you let me get away with it this time? The police officer feels bad for you, so he says, yeah, no worries, I'll let you get away with it this time. God's not going to do that with you. All of God's laws are like the law of gravity. Depending on the circumstances will depend on the results. Every single time, if the circumstances are identical, the results will be identical. And it doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman or, a, you know, what country you come from, what religion you are, what anything. It is equal in the way it's applied right across the board. If the same person kind of person does the same kind of thing, exactly the same thing, but they're from a different religion, don't, don't think that you're going to get a different result because you're not, right? If they're the, they a male compared with a female, don't think you're going to get a different result because you're not. They are going to be applied right across the board. And, and this is the beauty of the way God's created the universe. So every single person is accountable and we are accountable because we have the gift of free will. Mm -hmm. we, that's the price of the gift, if you like, yeah. is to be accountable for your actions. Okay, so the second part of the question, um, this person is sort of wanting to ask about when a spirit overcloaks another person. Yes. yes. And what kind of effect that has upon the person doing the overcloaking, upon the soul of that person. And you talked generally about yeah. um, what happens when we. So this is a bit more things. specific. Yes. So, so the spirit overcloaking another person. Now, the person on earth obviously is okay with being overcloaked. Otherwise, it couldn't happen. Otherwise, it couldn't happen. You know, the reality is a person on earth cannot be overcloaked unless their will is engaged to allow it to occur. How our will is engaged is we might not want our own life. We might want somebody else's. And so a spirit comes and lives through us and mm -hmm. has their life. Yeah. Um, we might not want to be 
you know, a certain type of person. You know, maybe we're shy and we don't want to be shy anymore. So spirit comes and overcloaks us and we're not shy anymore. And we get to feel a bit relieved inside because yeah. we're not exactly. so socially anxious. Yeah. So obviously the person on earth who is, in ta- who is encouraged such uh, behaviour in the spirit has a, far, has a high degree of accountability for their own unloving behaviour mm-hmm. towards themselves, mm-hmm. actually. They, and by the way, laws that are broken towards ourselves have just the same accountability as if they are towards another. So, for example, if I murder you or I murder myself, there will be a similar level of accountability. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, we can't just say, oh, but I just did it to myself, so I shouldn't be accountable. No, God makes everything accountable based on God's viewpoint of love. (laughs) All of God's laws are governed by that. Now, in the case of the spirit doing the overcloaking, they had a choice. They could have chosen, even though the person wanted it, they could have chosen to not do it. And that's the selfishness of the spirit now who have chosen this. That's his or her unloving behaviour. And of course, they are accountable for their unloving behaviour. And they're accountable for what they choose to do in the body of the person who's allowed them to use their body to do whatever they're doing. They're accountable for every act. Their their soul condition will degrade the same way as if they'd done it themselves. Mm. Right. So, so that's for the person being overcloaked. No, that's for the person overcloaking. But if, sorry, the person, for the person overcloaking, overcloaking, whatever he does in the body of the person he is overcloaking, he is personally accountable for, and. Whatever is, happens to that person, let's say he decides to go off and murder a few people, right? and there's many times that's happened on yeah. earth, yeah. then he is responsible for every one of those murders. Even though the person on earth might be put in, tr- tried and put in jail and eventually maybe even you know, corporal executed punishment or, executed for yeah. the crime, from God's perspective, the spirit, because he overcloaked the individual and did the act, he is uh, accountable for the crime. Right? And his soul would degrade to the condition of what he chose to do mm. as a result. So every, the way God's laws work, very fine, very specific, without any manipulation or modification, and that every single person who is involved in an act is directly attributable to the consequences of such actions. Yeah. And therefore, they are directly bear the responsibility and accountability. Mm. And it's a good system, obviously. It's a great system, isn't it? Yeah, because yeah. eventually the spirit learns that he did a whole heap of things that were unloving. Eventually he learns, you know. And there have been many spirits that take many hundreds of years to learn that, mm. unfortunately. We've talked to some that have taken thousands of years to learn that. We've talked to some that have since they, that, that never murdered a single person while they were on earth, but once they got to the spirit world, they murdered hundreds of people. And as a result, their condition degraded with every murder they undertook. Mm-hmm. And, um, and as a result of their degradation, eventually their pain increased to such a point that it became unbearable and they stopped and they yeah. wanted to talk to us about what's going on. It's, it's a beautiful system, isn't it? Like within all of it, I just see how God is trying to teach us about the power of our will yes. used in disharmony with love or used or in, in harmony, harmony with love. And that's and the theme that comes out all the time. Everywhere. Yeah. It's God wants us to understand ourselves yes. and, and the power of our will. How, yes. yeah. I think, though, that one of the biggest problems that we face on the planet, and this is probably something we can do to conclude this session mm-hmm. or say about concluding this session, is that... On this planet, we have these concepts and ideas that block us from this interaction with the spirit world. Usually, any conversation about a spirit from mainstream society is condemned, ridiculed, made fun of. And there is a deep, even amongst the people who do understand that there are spirits and there are, they can talk to them in the spirit world, there is a huge amount of misinformation and false beliefs, in fact, completely false beliefs. Mm-hmm. This shortage of accurate, scientific, real information regarding the interaction between the earth and the spirit world is causing so much damage to people in the spirit world and also on earth. And if we knew more truth about all of these interactions and engaged the entire situation in a lot different manner, we, w- we have available to us a large amount of information that, that would help us change how we interact with the spirit world, the life after our death. Yes. And it would help us immensely in terms of development on the planet, scientific, you know, uh, physical, 
physics-based development, mm -hmm. emotional-based development, socially-based development, politically-based development, and every other form that you can think of, it would help mm -hmm. us immensely with. It would also help us to understand the, a lot of the underlying effects and causes of disease and suffering that occur on the planet if we opened ourselves up to a, to a proper scientific discussion about these particular facts. The problem I see is that the majority of people on the planet are very much against such a discussion. The primary reason they are against is due to both scientific and religious fear. Let's look at the religious fear. In most forms of religion, there is a, a huge amount of negative information about interaction with spirits and spirit world. And in fact, in, for the Christian faith, for example, there is a direct condemnation of it at, at, at the threat of death. Hmm. If you look from a scientific perspective, there's ridicule and general degradation of any scientist who attempts to find any information about these particular things. So that's fear about finding out the truth about a whole heap of things which would disprove your own concepts of the universe. Mm -hmm. So that's still fear. So if we look at these two forms of fear, they're the primary two forms of fear, and then the third one is emotional fear, just the direct emotional fear of having the thought that other people who we can't see influence our daily life. Those three fears almost completely determine how much information about spirits and spirit world is available on this planet, mm -hmm. accurate information. And unfortunately, because of the lack of ac accurate information, we see huge amounts of degradation to the earth, degradation to people on the earth, pain and suffering on the earth, pain and suffering in the spirit world, just because of the lack of information. What I would propose is that if people wish to break away from these traditions of fear, then they would need to confront some of their own personal fears when we discuss spirit issues. And once they do that, if they have a, a passion to finding out the truth about what's really going on between the earth and the spirit world in their own personal day-to-day -day life and also in life of society, then we will have a great way of moving forward mm -hmm. in terms of spiritual development, emotional development, but in particular in terms of development in love on mm -hmm. the planet. And that's where I feel we need to head with regard to this issue of spirits. So we have many other questions that we need to answer about it, uh, as you know, but I feel if we understood that one thing, that there's a really big need for true scientific, re real information about this interaction between the earth and the spirit world. And obviously, you and I have personal experience with it, but in that we've lived in both locations and remember both mm -hmm. locations... The majority of people are in their first incarnation and therefore they have not any experience with the spirit world and there's a huge amount of fear about it. And, and we feel that if everyone knew the truth, it would be a lot easier life we'd yes. have here on Earth. Yep. And also the spirits who pass would have a lot easier life after they've passed. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I feel that's, uh, that's probably a good, good place note to, to wrap end up off today. this session, yep. which is yes. question 13 on the second session. Yes. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, darling. And thanks, guys, for your, for your videoing again. Yeah. Yeah.